Good morning, everybody. I hope you uh, have slept well and long enough, but I uh, even hope more you had a good time yesterday and have a better time even today. Um, we're going to start uh, the track today here with something more philosophical. Um, in the beginning, God created Earth. Well, some of you might believe that. I actually don't. We can have long discussions about that. But there's one thing I think we all agree on, that is that shortly after that time, IBM created the AS400. And whether it's still a dinosaur uh, living way beyond its expected lifetime, or it's a highly evolutionized uh, system that meets up to the challenges of today, Tom will discuss all this with a technical introduction to the AS400. Test. Okay. So, good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for being here. Uh, I will explain a little bit, uh, give you some information about the uh, IBM AS400. So, first, a little overview uh, about what I will uh, talk about. So, uh, I will first introduce myself and then uh, uh, get to the interesting stuff. Uh, first, a little history about the AS400. Then, um, we will get to IBM I, so I will explain what that is. Then I uh, will uh, tell you something uh, more about some other environments that are available on the system. Uh, a bit about programming, uh, how work is uh, done on the system. And, uh, well, I will uh, show you some uh, interesting stuff that you can do on the system uh, for the, uh, at last. So, who am I? I was an uh, AS400 uh, system programmer for a few years. And yeah, I, I really like the system. <laughs> um, so I wrote some uh, business logic in RPG and did some system administration. So I'm not a, a really a, a guru or something. Um, I currently work as a Linux system administrator at uh, PeerRep Belgium. And I'm a Linux and BSD user. I put my tent up in the Belgian village. So if you... Uh, uh, want to see me, you can uh, go see, see me there. So, why, uh, wanted, uh, why did I want to do this talk? Well, in uh, 2008, the AS400 celebrated its uh, 20th anniversary. And, well, if I talk to people uh, about the system, they all think it's really, really, really old. But actually, it's only 20 years old, so even uh, Unix uh, is, is older than that. And the mainframe is also older than that. So uh, I said, well, let's just do a talk about it. And yeah, I don't know why you are here, but uh, if you're interested in the system, I brought a, an old system to play with. So if you want access to it, you can see, see me after this talk and I give you uh, access to it. Uh, it is a system, the system is installed in, in uh, the Dutch language, so that's maybe that's uh, good to know. I don't have tapes for other languages, so I can't reinstall it. Um, in no way I represent IBM, so everything I say is uh, my views and uh, opinions only. So, a bit of uh, the AS400 history. It was developed in, uh, IBM, uh, by IBM Rochester in Minnesota as a mid-range system, so that means it's uh, actually a small mainframe. And it's uh, very uh, different from um, all the other systems that are around, like Unix. It works in a very different way. And it is extremely closed source. Even uh, within IBM, um, it, it is uh, really uh, closed. Uh, it was developed as part of Project Silver Lake and designed by Dr. Frank Saltis. That's the man on the picture there. So, uh, Rochester started building systems with uh, the system tree in 1969. And they, had, uh, they, they built uh, another, uh, 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 some other systems, which uh, I have pictures of, so I, I go, I'll go to the pictures. So, this is... Uh, the first one that came out of Rochester. Yeah, I like pictures, so... Uh, <laughs> then, um, 
this it was it was followed up by the system 32 and the system 34 and then the system 38 was uh, created and that was actually an, a whole new system and the operating system software that ran on it was cr called control program facility so this was a, a whole new system then IBM uh, created uh, another system the system 36 as a follow up of the system 34 because uh, many of its customers uh, didn't like the system 38 because it was too big and it's expensive for their needs and uh, they want to satisfy the customer's needs so they did create the system 36. Then um, IBM started a, a project called Fortnox and they wanted to combine uh, some of their mid-range systems uh, into one, uh, one new system. And they even went so far um, by uh, declaring the system 38 as being non-strategic and discouraged people from even buying it. So that was not a good thing for Rochester. Uh, and the project failed. <laughs> so uh, it left uh, Rochester uh, basically with nothing. But they did had uh, a backup plan and that was uh, this project Silver Lake. So in uh, that project they created the AS400 which was actually in uh, many ways just a new implementation of the system 38. So you can see there were uh, the, these are actually pictures of the first systems and yeah there are small systems and, and big ones. So in the past IBM renamed this system many 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 times. Uh, they first added an E to it because it became an E server. Then uh, they renamed it to I series, the I standing for integrated. Then uh, with the, when they released their Power 5 processors, they uh, renamed it to E server I5. And also the operating system was renamed uh, from OS 400 to I5 OS. And then, yeah, they renamed it to I5, system I5, and eventually it became the system I. Now, uh, this year, IBM released the Power 6 processor, and they, um, the system I uh, kind of like disappeared because um, the system I and the system P already used uh, more or less the same hardware. And with the release of Power 6, they combined these systems into one system called the Power Systems. And they also renamed i5 OS again to IBM I. So that's the old and the new logo. So these are the, the latest systems. So also the old ones 